as soon as we learn the term kaparat avonot, that anytime you suffer, according to the Gemara in a few places, it's considered kaparat avonot, it's, it's considered as if you've, a form of repentance for a sin that you've made. So you suffer here instead of suffering in Genom. But suffering is not always a kaparat avonot. Somewhat, sometimes suffering is just pure punishment. Sometimes suffering is just pure punishment. Why? You deserve it. Simply. You deserve it. So now, if a person lived their whole life as a wicked person, did somebody ask me this yesterday? You live your whole life, wicked person. Not a murderer. Not a thief. Not a wicked person by the eyes of the general population. I'm talking about wicked in the eyes of Hashem. Wicked in the eyes of the population, you don't need an answer for that. You don't need me for that. You don't need the Torah for that. Someone that's a murderer, you don't need, it doesn't make a difference. You don't need, obviously someone that's wicked in the eyes of the, of, of the world, he's a murderer, he's a thief, he's a rapist, he's a Hitler. Obviously, you know, this person has only one destination after this world, which is Gainom. But we're talking about someone that's not wicked in the eyes of the people. He's wicked in the eyes of Hashem, which is really the only thing that matters. So he is very nice to people. He gives charity to homeless people and the Red Cross and all types of idol worship, or even to Batek Neset. And he is very, very nice to women. It's just that he has a new one every day. But he's very nice to them. And he's very generous with money. It's just that he uses other people's money to be generous with. And all types of nice things that he does. But before he died, he got, I don't know, bar minan, bar minan, he got cancer. Cancer or some type of other crazy disease that ate up his body in a horrible way. Every single day he was losing a limb. Every day he lost a finger. Every day he lost a nail. Every day he lost something. And little by little, the, the, the disease is eating up his body. He suffered tremendously. Does that mean that after he dies, he's going to go to Gan Eden? Absolutely not. Not. He's not going to Gan Eden. Why? If he died without doing tshuva, his suffering is just pure punishment. It's just the beginning of the punishment. Really, why Hashem was doing this punishment? To try to get him to wake up. The only reason he was getting this punishment was not because Hashem really intended for it to be punishment. Hashem intended for it, for it to be a wake-up call. Real punishment is waiting for him after this life, if he doesn't do tshuva. But if he doesn't do tshuva, then he gets this uh, already a down payment of the punishment. Without doing tshuva, there's no chance in the world of getting to Gan Eden. It doesn't matter how many people do Kaddish for you. It doesn't matter how many people end up uh, learning Torah in your sake. Without doing tshuva, without you actually keeping Shabbat, keeping mitzvot, doing tshuva, chatanu, avinu, pashanu, and doing something about it, you have no chance, zero chance, according to Sfarim HaKadoshim. Not my opinion. You want source, I give you a million of them if you want. There's no questions asked. There's no, there's no chance. Anyone that tells you otherwise, just changing the Torah. He has to do a different religion. According to the Torah, without Shuvah, there's no Gan Eden. Yes, he suffered. Okay, he suffered. So what? He suffered. He deserves even more if he didn't do Shuvah. That's the reality. That's what Torah says. So, the point is, we have to do Shuvah. So the suffering is unfortunate, but it was supposed to be like a message, like a text message. You get a text message in the middle of the shoe, you're not supposed to pick it up. After the shoe, you're supposed to pick it up. Someone's giving you a message. Why is someone messaging you? To get your attention. If you don't answer, he sends you another message. If you don't answer, he sends you another message. If you don't answer, he calls you. If you don't call, he leaves you. If you don't answer, he leaves you a voicemail. If you don't answer, he calls you again. If you don't answer, he comes to your house. If you don't answer, he knocks a little harder. If you don't answer, he may break down the door. Rabotai, that sometimes that person is not a person. That is God. He's knocking at your door. Hey, I'm here. If you still didn't wake up, okay, come. I'll talk to you up there. We have a nice warm place for you.